Do you remember that last video that I made? The incredibly jank video? Well, this one's not going to be much of an improvement. It's still going to be a little jank. But I did find a major improvement to the old amethyst clock. And I've decided to just start calling it the amethyst clock because calling it the pestilence amethyst clock doesn't really roll off the tongue very well. So I wanted to see what I could do with the skulk sensor. Now, I realize it's not exactly the most efficient clock in the world. Matter of fact, it's it's quite terrible, but this is what I've been able to reduce it to. I do apologize if this frame rate drops. I do apologize if it's background noise. I don't exactly have the best setup. Now, this thing I've decided to call the splash clock. This is as compact as I could get this thing. That does look a little funky, but it takes one single book, which has to have at least nine pages. This was the minimum that I could get it to. Turn it to page two. You're going to want to put that inside this lectern right here. It's going to need three of any wool block, but if you'd like it to be tileable, you're going to need 13 of them. You're going to need one of any sound passable block, one soul sand, specifically soul sand, not soul soil, because you need it to be able to generate a bubbling effect. You need at least one calibrated skulk sensor, one redstone dust, one redstone comparator, and one armor stand, which allows you to make a splash clock. It can be either the non-tileable version or the tileable version. Now, you may be wondering, how does this thing work? So, this lectern right here, whenever this is changed to page two on the nine page book, I originally did this with 15 page books, but this is a smaller version. On page two, it tells this comparator here to send a signal out through this redstone. You'll notice over on the right of my F3 menu, this shows that this redstone dust is carrying a power level of two. This signal level is somehow feeding into this sideways because I've got the calibrated skulk sensor facing this way. This side with the amethyst it tells it what direction to pick up the redstone signal from. As this feeds into here, it goes into here. What this basically tells the calibrated skulk sensor to do is to only receive signals from falling onto a block or from splashing. It doesn't pick up any other sounds, which allows it to transmit this signal, the splashing of the armor stand, through this tile right here into this, which then can allow it to pass signal out this way through this direction right here. We move on to the tileable version. You do have to add quite a bit more wool, and this thing needs at least two blocks of headspace above it, so up to here at the minimum. Now, I do want to show you how this thing is built, and I'll show you the tileable version specifically. So, we're going to take our wool blocks first, and we're going to have to go up two. We're going to need to leave a gap here. Here, we take the soul sand, and we put down the soul sand right here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uncover this so you can see how this works a little better. We're going to need to wrap this completely around with more wool. So let's go ahead and do that right now. What this allows it to do is it keeps it from picking up excess sound on the outside, which allows you to tile this mechanism. Fortunately, you do that right there directly, which allows you to make this little encapsulation. You do require at least one sound transmissible block. I'm just using a block of quartz, but you can use anything that can pass sound through it. Your calibrated skulk sensor has to be placed from the direction that you're going to be feeding the signal into it. We're going to go ahead and pick up our redstone dust, our redstone comparator, our lectern, and of course, the nine page book. Now, it doesn't matter what direction the lectern is placed, I just prefer this direction. You're going to want to turn this to signal level two immediately. Comparator needs to be feeding signal from this redstone dust into this. This allows it to not pick up any walking sounds. As you can see, it's not setting off, but if I drop onto it, then it picks it up. We're going to want to silence this. So, we're going to want to use a water bucket. We're also going to want to place that over here, which allows this to create the bubbling effect. Inside of this bubbling area, we're going to want to insert an armor stand. Doesn't matter what orientation, and let it bounce. 
then to prevent this from picking up sound from anywhere else, you simply cover the top section of this. Et voila, you have an almost silent splash clock. Now, I don't know if this has any actual practical applications. It is just, as far as I can tell, a very strange redstone clock. It does output a signal approximately once every three quarters of a second, which is strange, and it does it at regular intervals. I don't really think this has any practical applications, but I did just want to show this off. So, thank you for coming in. As always, I'm Madame Pestilence, and yes, I'm using my chair skin instead of my standard skin. Thank you.